Hey here, Rogers, Rogers Hot Rod Garage. Welcome folks, it's kind of super cold outside. So again, we're in Germany here, so I got the stove going on, got the little fan blowing the hot air around, but check this out. Uh, did a little research and see these little things right here. This is the rear brake calipers, obviously. And this looks like it's laser cut right here. I'm not quite sure, but anyway, this is 10 millimeters, one centimeter expansion. So these are the rear brakes. Instead of trying to screw around and have some kind of modification made, I had a guy up in Hamburg, Germany, actually do these seven millimeter bolts, did all the correct specs on it. So basically I widened it enough so I can put on these vented discs in the rear right now, just to try to stop this thing when the LS3 is actually in full force right here. Also from the last video, I've got the windows installed. I haven't got everything done completely yet, but I've got the dashboard in. The dashboard's just placed in here right now temporarily. But tell you what, that's what it looks like right now. It looks pretty doggone cool. That door's over there, so everything rolls up and down. The mechanisms are in there. That took a long, long time because as you know, 70 and 71 door innards are different than 72 and later. So big, big, giant problem right here, but I think I've got that solved. So anyway, the video today is gonna to be about doing the rear brakes and then getting my Willwood front brakes actually uh, put in there. And you see them right up in here. Of course, they're just tie strapped in there right now. And the goal is today is to actually get kind of, some kind of adapter plate made for it. And I got a whole lot of other stuff going on. I want to put those on the John Deere 400 1974. I got these back from the Cromer for the V12 powered 34 coupe. Doing a couple little projects right here for some friends. And this right here, it's gonna be the copper top for the birdhouse. There's a lot of stuff going on. And one more thing I'll show you here is I finally got these from Klaus, cool dude. Door slide, absolutely cool. Got them filled up with all this stuff right here. These are my nuts and bolts and absolutely cool drawer slides and got the whole back cabinet cleaned up over here. That was a project I wanted to do for a long, long time. So all this is kind of sorted and cleaned after about 10 years and the same thing over here. So anyway, enjoy the video, Roger's Hot Rod Garage and we'll get busy on the Porsche 914 LS3 build. All right, hey, pure coincidence. The UPS guy was just here, and this is like Santa Claus showing up and leaving your presents. Yeah, it's cold out here, but look. That is Mittelmotor. Mittelmotor, and I got some parts that showed up, so let me take these out and unpack them. All right. So, see what these good folks sent us. pack of material here. Can't say I want to get rid of it. I don't know what that is. Alright, so this is kind of cool. This is the complete brake line set. I won't take out the plastic right now for the 914, so I ain't got to screw around with it. Uh, don't know what company made it, but it looks like it's not made in China. It says Porsche 914, 4, 9, 6, 7 liter. 914 70 to 75 so cool part one man these guys do a really good job packing stuff up a lot of fluff in here so that's one of the emergency brake cables that goes this is the longer one so I imagine this one goes over to the passenger side a uh, shorter one this is the one for the middle to go to the left and right side. Huh. So, ah, I'm about to say, I'm missing some stuff here. So this is in its little box itself. This says, Porsche original Teile, 
parts, genuine, genuine Porsche parts. So that would be surprising if this is actually original. Okay, these right here are actually the pin clips to hold the, uh, the brake parts in. That's kind of cool. These are the original three-point seat belts, left and right. I imagine it's left and right, I don't know, but I think the guy should know that. And brake friction pads or brake klötze, brake klötze brake pads. Uh, flexible line, left and right. And that's about it. I think I ordered everything. I'm just going down to work right now. So, my in intuitiveness tells me that one of these pins right here has to go on this side but what I figured out is that pin won't fit through here so these are the ones on this side but I'm sure I have to use one of these on the other side the rest of it I got figured out these little holding pins slide through here this is a no-brainer that stops the vibration plus I put the little high heat paste on the back side of it but I think what I'm gonna do is I have to drill out the back side right here of both of these because that pin won't go through here. If you see right here, those are not with little wedges like that in them. And it goes right through and it fits perfectly. So I don't know, put in the comments if you know what the hell you're doing because I don't, but I think that's the way it's actually gonna work. And they're loaded up in here just fine right now. Anyway, that's my plan. All right, so I think I've skinned the cat on this when I figured it out. Now, what I'm trying to do is, you see that little bitty hole right there? I don't know if you can see it right now, where the pin goes through right here to hold these things from keeping them from backing out. These, because of this adjustment right here, I think they're just a little bit off. So what I've done here is just on this tip right here, I got a little bitty piece off. I need like a half a millimeter and then that pin hole, see the hole right there? When it goes through, you can see a little bit there, it'll be visible. Again, this is some backyard North Carolina engineering. If I'm doing this wrong, sorry, don't follow what I'm doing right here, but I gotta get these brakes on. I don't know what a half a millimeter is, but that's basically what I took off. Put a little polish in here. On the base, and also on the tip of it. And so now, this is one that's free. This is the other side. The other one I already got working. It goes right in that little hole right there. And now, that little pin, see that little hole right there? It shows up right now. And now this thing can go in there. Before it was buried halfway in there. So I think that'll actually do the trick. And now the only thing I have to do is, let me get one of these wider pins out of here. This one for the other side. Is I got them marked here because look, it won't go through there. It's only off like a millimeter. So I gotta enlarge this hole just a little bit because I can't screw with these right here because these are the actual holders. So anyway, that's my plan. Hope it works. Uh, a little tight. Maybe this one right there, so I think that's the one I gotta do right there. Just a light reaming of the hole here. Let's see if that does the trick. Not quite, so I gotta go down to the second level here. Perfect. All right. Okay, so I got my pins in here now. I'm assuming the orientation is this way because it goes down just a little bit more and these are loose, but they're snug up in here. Get my little high temperature grease off of here and we'll call it a day. So I think this one is done. 
and I uh, don't know if this is the passenger side or not, but I'll go ahead and lay this one down and knock out the next one real quick. Hey, I'll do one on time lapse here. So check this out. Just a little bit of this copper paste right in here on this inside. Stop that little annoying squealing going on. And then also I put it just a little bit on the tip on the pins that goes in simply because whoever the next person is who takes this thing apart might be me won't have a tough time getting it out again you got to use the copper uh i guess you would call the grease the high heat grease otherwise the stuff just leaks out and you don't want to get on top of your pad so look i'm gonna go fast forward here here check this out I got through grinding now and if you look way way down in there I'm gonna hold this thing really still you can see how I move closer to the actual trailing arm in here and how this entire caliper now is moved over five millimeters according to my math over there on the workbench so I've got these uh, they're hardened uh, washers they're not the right thing I'm gonna get a guy I know who actually can turn this thing on on a, a metal lathe he's gonna make me some hardened five millimeter thick distance blocks. Same thing on the bottom right here. And if you notice that screw, that screw is exactly from Porsche, three centimeters, I need 3.5 so I can get that windings to go out through the rest of it and it'll be about a millimeter or two millimeters sticking at the other side. So basically, put my flashlight down here. I push this in five millimeters so I can have this vented disc 24 millimeter thick vented disc, so this is the heavy duty one, moved a little bit over. So I'm telling you all that because I don't mind discovery learning and, and figuring stuff out, but you know, you go to YouTube and you know, there's some great information on YouTube, but you can't Google something like this or YouTube something like this, at least not that I know of. But I did call the folks at uh, Mittelmotor, which is Middle Motor over here in Germany. And the guy said, yeah, yeah, that's actually how you do that. Did you come up with that on your own? I said, yeah, I kind of scratched my head. I'm from North Carolina, I figured it out. But he confirmed what I'm doing is when you do this type of modification and put the vented disc on the back, that's what you do. Um, when you build a hot rod, like, you know, the coupe over here, you can just, you know, kind of like, eh, that's about right. And then cut and weld and grind. Here, it's a different story because everything was so well engineered and engineered to fit exactly like it's supposed to, you can't just willy-nilly stuff like that. Yeah, willy-nilly is, is another North Carolina term. I'm sure they use it in the South too. But look, good news story on this one. I figured it out. But let me show you what I did last night here since I'm over here. This right here is your typical Summit Racing, uh, not a catch can. This is a water uh, fill, I guess is what you would call it, a water fill or water reservoir, probably a better term for it. And this is the one that I had to do some modifications on because it's not exactly like I needed it. So the actual overflow hose, when this thing burps out over 16 pounds, used to be right here. I moved it to the other side right here. Now we're going to TIG weld that thing in place. I've got a plug on this one right here with a little blue tape on it. We're going to TIG weld that too. And I say we're Roland's going to do that because his TIG welding skills are 100% better than mine. And on the bottom right here, that is a one inch diameter round piece that I have to modify so I come out the bottom of this and get to this size hose right here and then this is going to mount right here and be my fill for the top of this nice little hybrid Renegade hybrid uh, block up there if you can see that from Renegade hybrids way up in there that's where your actual fill is for the motor and then this is that little piece that I made a long, long time ago welded in here, obviously painted over top of it. And never mind my runs on here with a clear coat. You won't see that when it's mounted up in here. But since I'm down in here, check this out. There's my, you know, build a better mouth strap. There's my converting from an air-cooled engine over to water-cooled. And according to Scott at Renegade Hybrids, his little diagram he did. The diagram's laying back here someplace, but I won't bother you with that. Just go watch another video. There's part of it right there. 
So having said all that, got all my parts in. You saw the earlier, the unpacking from Middle Motor. Uh, now I've just got to take this one, do the same thing. I mount this one over here, and then I'll call it a day. So not, not a frustrating day, but I didn't make as much progress as I thought I was going to because I had to uh, figure this stuff out over here too. But let me get this stuff mounted and at least I got a way ahead on this right now. So making progress, take care. Bye bye from Roger's Hot Rod Garage. Thanks for watching. And yeah, super, super cold outside, but I got my fireplace going on in here. So it's nice and toasty warm in here. Again, thanks for watching. Take care, bye bye. It's all took just a little bit. All right, modification number 552. These little aluminum pieces in here that this guy put in for me, you see how they're sticking out like two millimeters right here? That's gotta come off because these right here and those right there don't match. These are just a little bit like a millimeter or two in circumference wider. No, circumference diameter this direction right here. So he actually told me this. Hey, look, you might have to modify these just a little bit. He didn't do the exact machine work. Maybe he should have, but he actually told me this. I'm gonna have to just take this piece of aluminum down. So that's what this little tool right here is gonna do for me. All right, the damage has been done here. Look at all those little shards right now. This is actually, I think, stainless steel. But check this, this actually turned out pretty clean. This is not machining. This is me with that Harbor Freight you know, oversized Dremel tool that I got, but it, it looks pretty good. And again, I didn't take anything away from the actual caliper itself. I just basically cleaned up this guy's work, uh, Alex. This is what it comes out to right here. You see that little overhang right there? Well, he had about two millimeters of it on the inside right here. So I just cleaned that up, make it look all pretty and everything, but that still didn't solve the problem because the disc was hitting right here on this piece in the back, the little hole down here. And I'll explain that to you in a second. So, again, discovery learning here in Roger's Hot Rod Garage. This right here vented 29 centimeters from here to here, and non-vented, the little thinner one, 28.5. Do my North Carolina math right here, that's 2.5 per size. So the little black line on here is gonna come off of here. I'm gonna give it to my brother-in-law. They got a big giant metal lathe at the shop and he'll sell, he'll turn this down for me tomorrow again. I just gotta take a little 2.5 off here. What's that, an eighth of an inch? And again, them damn German engineers back in the 70s, everything is about an eighth of an inch or in this case, a millimeter or two. And what's also very, very good to see or easy to see right here, see that little spate between here? That's that five millimeters I've been talking about earlier. So, kind of solve all those problems. Anyway, so this stuff right here, see those little shards? Man, if you get one of those stuck in your hand, I got two or three of them in here, it hurts like the bejesus. That's, that's another Southern North Carolina term right here. But anyway, gonna clean up right now. Uh, still made progress today on, on the 914 here. And uh, take care like and subscribe and unfortunately or fortunately depending on who you're asking it's 6 35 and i'm going to be heading upstairs here in about 15 minutes once i get everything cleaned up again rogers hot rod garage thanks for watching appreciate it bye bye